What's going on everyone? Today I've got a generator project I'm working on. I picked up a few of these little AC power meters and they, they seem to work quite well for the price. They're well under 20 US dollars. And I've, I've come to like them enough that I'd like to add one to my little Harbor Freight two-stroke generator here. Um, I, this is the new one I picked up, um, which is a, an upgrade from this old one. The old one has power, um, yeah, power, voltage, current, and uh, total total energy in watt hours. And this, this new unit has those four measurements as well as power factor and frequency. So what I think I'm gonna do is take this, uh, this is a, this box has is sort of like a test set that I built. It has a DC power supply in it with a DC meter as well as the AC input meter here and uh, some outlets on the side. And these are the terminals for the DC supply. Um, and it's, it's a nice little mobile unit to use as a companion to something like a generator to check its power output. What I think I'm going to do is put the more sophisticated unit in this test set and then take the older unit and put it on the generator. Because on the generator, it's just nice to have a order of magnitude, but how much power am I drawing? But I'd rather have the, the more sophisticated meter on the test set to kind of be mobile and I can kind of plug it in where I need. So I think what I'm going to do first is take the old one out. If I'm lucky, this is going to be the same footprint as the old one, and it looks like it is. So it should be a direct replacement. I'm just going to reuse the, um, on the interior here is, uh, it's just four wires, two wires for the voltage measurement and two wires that go to a, a, a coil that goes around the, one of the AC wires to measure current. So I think I'm just going to drop this right in with the, um, with the existing wiring and then I'll, uh, start working on the, uh, generator over here. You can see I, I kind of carved out, there, there's plenty of space in the front here. Um, what I did was I moved the overcurrent reset button, so that's why there's this hole here. And on the back there are some, some mounting features. I already moved the capacitor, which normally sits up here. I have it uh, in a place where I can Velcro to the bottom of the gas tank. So I think the first thing will be to just kind of clear out some of this um, structure here. So I have a flat surface and then I can trace the meter and uh, cut a hole with the Dremel to, uh, to sink it in. So First things first, I'll get the new meter in the test set here, and then we'll start working on the generator. First half is done, got the new meter in the test set here. Display is lit up very nicely. You can see the voltage is a bit low in, in the shed here because of the 100 feet of extension cord, but uh, looks like it's working just fine. DC power supply is pulling a few watts uh, at idle, working just fine. The only deviation I made was I used actually used the new current clamp that came with the new meter in here, which is uh, this one. This, uh, it's a clip-on style, which is really convenient, um, but I, I'd prefer to use the, the solid piece, the solid core one on um, on the generator, which I think is a, a, definitely a harsher environment with the heat and vibrations. And uh, so I'd, ra I'd rather have the more fragile part in here. It won't see as much, uh, as much abuse. So now that this is done, I'll uh, get started on the generator. Got the meter snug in the front panel. I think it came out pretty nicely. A few apprentice marks around the edges. And the back looks pretty darn good too. Uh, what I ended up doing was tracing around the the uh, interior uh, dimensions here on the front, and then I just used the Dremel to cut that outline out the front, and that gave me a, an idea of what I needed to remove on the back, uh, which I think was the better way to go rather than trying to flatten this wholesale and then work the uh, work the hole after that. So probably a little bit more efficient. The other tools I used were um, for areas I couldn't access the Dremel where it was this uh, handheld hacksaw here. And also my chisel was great for paring the edges and kind of cleaning up some, some burrs from the, the Dremel cut. So that's in there nicely. Now I have to wire it up. Um, I haven't really gotten this far yet. What I need to do is add the toroid, uh, the uh, Rogowski coil or whatever this is, and also get some two wire to connect to the hot and neutral line. So we'll get back to you when that's installed. Successful installation on the wiring. I went the extra mile for the voltage sense wires and I used some like fork connectors to uh, attach them to the outlet here. I actually had to take the outlet out to access the screws on the sides, but that was easy. There's one screw down here and one on the right side here. So after that came out, I had full access and then added the coil on the hot lead here, which is red, I believe it's the side with the, what is this? Overcurrent protection, the circuit breaker here. I couldn't think of the word. Um, it doesn't, shouldn't really matter, it's AC, but that's the lead I put it on. And then, of course, attached the four wires to the proper terminals here. These, the, As it sits here, the top two are for the voltage sense, and the bottom two are for the coil, as the, you have on the little diagram here. And I'm looking at this sticker here, and I'm realizing the sticker is upside down, but the screen 
you can't really tell from the front. I'm pretty sure this button goes on the right side. But if I, if I reconfirm, if I come over here to my test set, yeah, the button is on the right and the orientation is correct. So, okay, I think I got that right. That was um, the better orientation for me here with the wiring. So hopefully I got that right. Uh, I might add a few. The only other thing is this, this uh, little display might... It's pretty snug, it might pop out, but I might add a few drops of glue onto the um, periphery here just to help secure that in place for any vibrations or anything. I always hesitate to kind of glue things together real permanently with the theory that I might take something apart in the future. And a perfect example of that is this test set here where I upgraded the meter. If I had glued this in, it probably never would have come out or it would have been a much bigger struggle. So a few dots of, uh, I think, E6000 around the edge will hold that in place. Now I'd love to, show you a test of this right now, but it's getting late and I can't fire the generator up. It's, first of all, it's in pieces and I have to put it together, but I'm also um, I'm waiting on some gasket maker here to cure before I can fire it up again. So that'll have to wait until tomorrow. I'll get back to you. They get back to you when that is all set up. All right, today is tomorrow and I've got the generator put back together and ready for a quick test of my new power meter. Test setup is generator to my test set with the new meter in it and over to a 500 watt incandescent light there or halogen or whatever it is so i'll get this fired up let it warm up for a minute and then uh turn the camera back on and we'll take a look at the readings on the power meters there you have it everyone resounding success. Both meters seem to be working well and they both matched up on their measurements. I think this is a great little accessory for a generator. I, I'm i thinking about doing this on my larger five kilowatt generator, though the issue with that is it's a uh, has a 240 line as well as which is split into two 120 lines. So I'll have to think about how I can install one economically to kind of monitor the entire system power. But that's a project for another video, so uh, thank you all for watching. I hope uh, you learned something, and this will inspire you to tackle this on your own generators. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.